Hi guys, it's Cornish Kayak Angler here. Today I'm at Cornwall Canoes and I'm going to be looking at installing a fish finder to the removable tackle pod from Viking Kayaks. Now this is a removable pod, it's found on their Viking Kayaks Pro Fish Reload and Pro Fish GT models. Really handy bit of kit. Uh, you can hold all your fishing gear inside the pod, the lid lifts up there, you can store your tackle in there so it's easy to hand on the kayak whilst you're fishing. Uh, but not only that, you can install a fish finder to this um, so that it's all contained within one system that's easy to take out of the kayak at the end of the day, put in at the start of the day. Fish finder display fits on top, um, the transducer fits in a slot in the base of the pod. Uh, all the wiring is sort of held inside, the battery inside, it's all contained, really neat bit of kit. Uh, yeah, found on their ProFish Reload and GT models. They're very popular kayaks, especially over here in the UK for saltwater kayak fishing. Uh, and lots of guys wanted to put fish finders on these and bike can make it very easy with this removable pod. And today I'm just going to run through how to fit a fish finder to a pod. Uh, it, the same process goes for much of the fish finders out there on the market. Uh, today I'm going to be installing the new one from Lawrence. It's the Lawrence Hook Reveal 5. This comes with their 83200 transducer, the HDI transducer. So it's a fish finder with an integrated GPS chart plotter. Has the option where you can build up your own maps using Genesis Live. So it takes the sonar readings as you're going along and uh, stores the contour readings and uh, builds up your own maps. That's pretty cool. Uh, also has the chirp sonar and the down scan imaging. So uh, you get a really good idea of what's beneath you in the water column, be it fish or just the structure at the bottom so you can find those all important fishing marks. And yet today I'm gonna to be installing this one to the pod. Um, like I say, the same process will go for all sorts of fish finders out there, whether it be a, a rain ring, Garmin, Hummingbird, etc. Um, the whole process is pretty similar. So uh, let's take a look and uh, I'll run through the things we're gonna to need to install this fish finder to the pod. Okay, so a few things needed for this install. Obviously we've got the pod and the fish finder, which I've just spoken about. Uh, also going to be using the Lowrent transducer scupper hole kit. So this will allow us to fit the transducer into the uh, scupper hole, which is found in the bottom of this pod. Uh, so that's a off the shelf accessory, which makes it very easy to fit that transducer to the pod. Uh, we're going to need a battery to power the fish finder. This is just a standard 12 volt, seven amp hour sealed lead acid battery. Uh, it's got some little terminals on top and for those we'll be needing a couple of spade end connectors. These are just crimp on spade end connectors, 6.3 millimeter wide ones, uh, insulated ones. They're gonna be crimped onto the end of the power cable so that we can uh, attach the power cable to the battery nice and easily. Uh, and then also going to be using from Railblazer their fish finder mount designed for the Hook 2 and Hook Reveal series. Uh, it's going to be used with a Railblazer Starport base, so that's going to be bolted onto the pod. This will uh, plug into the back of the fish finder. It's an aftermarket fish finder mount with plenty of adjustability, uh, and it makes it nice and easy to take the fish finder off and on the pod if you need to. The fish finder does come with a mount as standard, but uh, we're going to use uh, one of these nice Railblazer mounts uh, this time round. Uh, now, a few tools also required. Going to be needing a drill or electric drill or screwdriver. Uh, we have a hand screwdriver as well, that's quite useful. Uh, some drill bits uh, and also some sealant. Going to need a drop of that to seal some fixings uh, and also some pliers or some crimping tools to uh, crimp on those spade end connectors. Uh, right, so let's start. Let's have a look at how we're going to install this. Uh, I'm going to start by installing the transducer, which is uh, the most fiddly bit of the install, so we'll start with that. Uh, now I'm going to need to open up the, the box for the fish finder and get out the parts we need. Uh, so we open it up. There's the display unit. And in a little packet there. We can pop that to one side. Don't need that just yet. Then take out the packaging and get to, here's the transducer. So this is the 83200 HDI transducer. A load of cable on it with a connector on the end. Uh, we're going to be needing that one. Uh, also in here comes with the standard mount. 
I'm not going to be using that because we're using the rail blazer mount so that can stay in the box. We've just got the power cable. Don't need this one just yet, but I'll take it out and put it to one side. I'll need it shortly. And then there's a few packets of parts. Now, the only one we really need is the bit with the transducer fittings inside. Uh, so we open that up. There's a, a little packet with some washers in there, some plastic washers and rubber washers. We're going to need those. Uh, there's also the stem which sits on top of the transducer that attached to the transducer. We're going to need that one. Then there's also in here a bolt. Uh, going to need that one as well, along with a couple of stainless washers. So there's a couple of small washers. Uh, we'll need those. The rest we can pop to one side. We won't be needing just at the moment. Okay, so as mentioned, we're going to be using the low wrench transducer scupper hole kit to install the transducer to the pod. Uh, this installs inside the pod, underneath this plate here. So we're going to have to remove this. It's held in place with two screws, so we can just take a screwdriver to undo these. And beneath here, opens up to sort of a, a recess, sealed in recess, sealed off from the rest of the pod, where we can store all the excess wiring from the transducer, and also fit this scupper hole mount kit. So we've just done the screws there, pop that off, that disc there, plastic disc, which sits on top, as you can see there, opens up to a sealed recess. And you can see the hole in the bottom there where we're going to uh, mount this transducer mount. And if we just pop open this box, here's uh, the main of the transducer mount. It's effectively a long threaded stem with a, a fitting on the bottom where we can fit the transducer and uh, a wing nut and the top plate basically all clamps it together either side of the scupper hole uh, and mounts it securely in this pod. So it's just good to have a look at installing that now. So I'll just take this wing nut off, take off the bits we don't need for a minute and I'll install the transducer to the bottom. So all these just slide off, these extra top plates, there's a foam disc and a rubber disc. Yeah, it leaves just a, the threaded stem with the uh, attachment on the bottom. So we're going to need the transducer now with the, the stem. So this is a slide on stem, some grooves on the top of the transducer. This just slides into the grooves and sort of clicks into place. So now the transducer has got a point of attachment at the top, which we're going to, uh, well, it's going to be where we fit the, uh, the transducer mount like so. There's just a few little bits we need to do that. So we go back to this little packet where we had the rubber washers and some plastic washers. If we take out those, we're going to need those along with the bolt and the, uh, the stainless washers as well. Now the plastic washers, they have teeth. You might not be able to see it, but they have teeth either side of the washer. Um, one side sits against the eyelet on the top of the transducer and the other slots into, into the mount. You can sort of see where it's uh, grooved there. So uh, it locks into place in there. Uh, now this is the quite fiddly bit. You have to line up the plastic washers into the, uh, into the mount and then slide in the, the transducer. Probably not going to be able to show it that well here. You sort of slide that into position, line it all up, and eventually it will find its position where the teeth lock into the uh, transducer eyelet. And it sort of sits in position. Uh, you want to sort of set it at a right angle there. So then it's just a case of bolting this on using the bolt, the rubber washers, and the stainless washers. So you take your bolt. Pop on first the stainless washer and then a rubber washer, like so. And pass this through the, uh, the hole, through the mount, through the top of the transducer. And then on the other side where the threads now come out, we pop on the uh, rubber washer again, the stainless washer, and then the nut. Then it's just a case of tightening them up. Um, now they're hex nuts and 
bolt head, so we're going to need spanners. I forgot to mention that in the kit we need at the start, but yeah, you're gonna need two spanners, 11 mil spanners, just to do this fitting up. And as you tighten it up, it all sort of clamps down onto those rubber washers. Uh, don't, you don't need to overdo it, but just enough so it's fully secure and it's not going to jump out of position. So let's just tighten that up here now. Sort of see as you get in there, the rubber washers start to crush, and you won't need to go much more once they start doing that. Okay, we're about there now. So now that's fully secured on there, it's ready for attachment into the uh, base of the pod. And all we do is we flip the pod over threaded rod up through the hole in the bottom there. You should see it sort of all matches up nicely so the transducer is going to sit nice and level in the, in the recess there. Um, before we do that you want to get all the transducer wire and pass this through the hole and bring it up through the top side. Pass that through, get one through. There's loads of cable with this. It's not all needed on a kayak. Useful if you're on a boat where you're fitting the transducer to the transom and the head unit's up in the cuddy or in the cabin. For a kayak, because everything's so close together, all this excess wire, it's not really needed, but we can luckily we can coil it up and uh, store all the excess in this pod. So yeah, I've just pulled all that wiring through. So that leaves the uh, wiring. There's a, there is a groove in the uh, in the mount. You might be able to see it there that the uh, wire can slot into, and that allows it to sort of sit securely when this transducer mounts in place. Okay, now you might be able to see that there if I show you it closely how that's fitted in there. So that's where the finished uh, sort of position where it's going to sit. We've just got to do up the top side of the mount now to secure it in position. We need the foam washer that come with the kit. That can pop on top. And we also need the plastic top plate. We're going to need that as well. There was also a rubber washer that come with a kit. We don't need that. That's not needed in this installation. Now with that foam washer I've just popped into the mount, you want to sort of force that all the way to the bottom and into the scupper hole. Uh, it's a bit fiddly, you have to get your hand right in there, but pop that in place, it wedges in the scupper hole, sort of seals it up a little bit. And that just leaves the top plate to pass on. Now, there is a groove in the top plate where the wiring sort of sits in when it's all clamped down, so you've just got to sort of align that little notch up with the wiring as it's in position. So you sort of do that as the very last bit, just as it all tightens down. But yeah, it just leaves the wing nut now to put onto the threaded rod and wind all the way down. It's a tedious job, it takes a while, so I'm going to speed this part up. Okay, so it's taken a few minutes, but the wing nut is now getting pretty tight at the bottom, everything's sort of uh, clamped together now. You don't need to go over tight with it, but just enough so it, it feels pretty secure, nothing's going to move. If you flip that over now, yeah, you see the transducer there, it's uh, pretty secure. It's a little bit of wiggle room, but that's fine. It's not going to move much during use. But that's now installed, clamped to the bottom there, facing sort of downwards, so it's pretty level. So that's going to give a pretty accurate reading, being in direct contact with the water. Um, so yeah, that just leaves now to get rid of all this excess cabling. Uh, this can all cram into this recess here. Again, it takes a while to coil up and put in there, um, but we, we can start that now. Uh, you also notice that the stem from the transducer mount is actually longer than the recess, so we can just snip this down a little bit. We don't, we don't need it all now, so we're, we can just take some snips and just take off the excess so that it sits below the level so the plate can go back on. But yeah, now I'm just going to 
coil up this transducer cable. It takes a while. You've got to go round and round, cramming the cable in all the space possible. Uh, so again, I'm just going to speed this part up again. Okay, so I'm just cramming in the last coils now of the wire. It's been a bit of a tight fit, but they're all in there. Um, so yeah, you'll be able to see that now. Up there, sort of coiled right up in there, all the wiring. You just want to leave about, you know, perhaps 12 inches to come out of the, the recess to plug into the back of the unit. So you've got some flexibility if you're moving your fish find around. Now, before we go putting the top plate back on, um, we're going to install the power cable into the pod as well. And we'll need to do that now before we put the, the top back on. Um, what we'll be doing is running the power cable in through the wall of the recess here into the inside of the pod so we can access it through, through the hatch there. Um, and to do that, just going to drill a, a small four millimeter hole right in the top of the recess, just down from the vertical lip on the wall, right at the top with a drill. Uh, just watch your wiring and just run the drill through that. And that will allow the wiring to poke through. It's a four millimeter cable, so it should be a fairly snug fit through. We can poke that through, force it through. Okay, and it can make it easier to pull it from the other side. Pull all the excess through. And again, leave maybe 10 to 12 inches between it coming out from the recess and the, the connector into the back of the unit. And because that holds right at the top of the pod, it's well above the water line. You won't find any water gets in there. However, always good practice to pop a dropper sealant just around the, the wire there, uh, just to waterproof that little hole there. I'm just using some clear Sikaflex EBT Plus. And uh, that stuff's really good at sealing all sorts of fixings on kayaks. But yeah, I've just uh, smeared a drop around that wire. Just make sure it sits all the way around and against the hole. So that's in there, no problem. So yeah, now it leaves the top plate to go back on. Now that top plate was a disc. What we've needed to do, or what I've had to do, is to cut a slot in the top of the disc. You can see it there. Just with a hacksaw, we could use uh, some snips to snip it in there. Uh, but what that's going to allow the wiring to do is to come out to the top side and reach the fish finder. So if I get this in place now, you'll be able to see how that how that goes. Just sort of cram it on into position. So I've got the wires now coming out from the pod through the plate and I just need to uh, put, pop the screws back in which held that plate in place and that keeps everything in position and snug. Okay, so that's in position there now. You can see how that's fitted there with the wiring coming out at the back through the slot and that top plate screwed down in place. So that leaves the wiring now ready to fit into the back of the fish finder unit when we install that. Uh, you might just need to take it off a few times and get the right amount of wiring um, once the fish finder is in place, but it's easy to do. Just take that top plate off and uh, pull some wiring out or pop some more, coil it up back inside. And yep, that's the power cable also installed. So now that leaves us to fit the main display unit and attach the battery. Okay, that leaves us to fit the main display of the fish finder. So the main head unit here. Uh, to do that, we're using the rail blazer mount for the fish finder. Uh, and that's going to plug into a starport base, which we're now going to bolt onto the pod. Uh, so to do that, we're going to sort of position it just back from that disc, which opened up to the recess, uh, in, right in the center. Uh, the, the starport from Railblazer, it comes with some bolts, some M6 stainless bolts with some washers and nuts. 
So we're going to use those to fit the star port. And yeah, we're just going to position that star port nice and central in the middle of the pod. Uh, I've got a drill with a two mil drill bit in just to mark some, uh, mark some pilot holes. But yeah, when you're happy, it's in position and nice and level. We can just, uh, yeah, pop a couple of pilot holes through there just to mark where the holes are going to go. As I mentioned, these are six millimeter holes, uh, bolts, so just pop a six millimeter drill bit into the drill and drill out where those pilot holes were. Nice and easy. So yeah, now we're just going to bolt on the starport over the holes. Okay, so to bolt on this, we're just going to uh, put a drop of sealant on the holes again. A little smear of that on each hole. Sick of flex again. Pop the bolts through the starport. And down through the holes. And we're just going to need a 10 mil spanner to do up the nuts on this. So yeah, nut washer. I've got my electric screwdriver set, fairly low torque setting, but it's gonna make it a bit easier to do these up. So yeah, just reach inside, locate the, uh, the bolts. And do those up. Same with the second bolt. Okay, so that's the starport now fitted nice and securely to the pod. So that just leaves us now to uh, to fit the fish finder to the to the mount to plug into this starport. So there's a little adapter on the end of a, an R-lock adjustable arm. So this adapter now needs to go into the back of the low rinse hook reveal five unit. And to do that, there is, you can see it in the bottom there, a bolt in the base, which we're going to have to undo, going just with a screwdriver. As we undo this, it loosens the, the mount. You can see it there getting closer together, sort of allows it to pivot. What that allows us to do is to pop it into the back of that mount, wiggle it into position, and then do that back up again in the desired position. Got it at about 45 degree angle to the screen. So that can just be nipped up there, that bolt. And you can see there, that's, that's in position there now. And it allows you to, to, to move the mount if you want as well. So that now can just be plugged into this adjustable arm, R-lock adjustable arm. As with all Railblazer stuff, there's a little gray locking collar, so that locks it into position. And then we take the rubber cap off the starport base. Again, unlock the locking collar, and this can now pop into position lock in place now we can just make fine adjustments so that the fish finder screen sits nice and level um, you can just check if the you know we can see there the the hatch lid when it's open at full extent it's only just reaching the fish finder so that's about right there i mean if we wanted we can we can make this more upright and angle the fish finder fish finder sits a little higher off the deck but now it's completely clear of the screen when the hatch lid opens so that's that there and you've got plenty of swivel adjustability on this mount angle adjustability so it allows you to get your screen at that perfect angle for viewing whilst you're paddling and fishing and then you've got the two wire connectors they go into the back of the unit they're sort of push fit connectors so you just got to locate them in the in the correct orientation and then pop those into position just push those in it's always worth perhaps just popping a, a little bit of a 
dielectrical grease on the connectors, the brass terminals. Uh, they're always the weak point of any kayak, saltwater corrosion. If you leave saltwater sit on any electrical terminals, eventually they will uh, corrode away. So it's always good, a preventative measure to uh, put a dab of uh, dielectric grease, something like corrosion block grease is very good. Uh, on the terminals, just keeps them in prime condition so that you won't ever get any connection problems or corrosion problems. So yeah, that, and now we can just see the wiring just enough there to reach the unit. It's all plugged in there, like so. And it push fit into the back connectors there. So now the fish finder is in place. It leaves us now just to hook up the power source and then the fish finder will be fully working and fully installed to the pod. Okay, so now we've just got to power the fish finder and hook up the battery. So yeah, this is a 12 volt, seven amp hour sealed lead acid battery. Uh, it's gonna power this fish finder for a couple of days before it needs charging, so a couple of day sessions, perhaps, you know, a couple of eight hour trips. Um, to recharge, just use a 12 volt trickle charger. Um, don't go using a, a full on car battery charger because you will fry these batteries, you'll end up warping the, the battery plates inside, so it's gotta be a trickle charger when you're recharging these small batteries. Um, but yeah, we just simply got to take our, our power lead. Um, there's a, so a positive and negative end, red and black, um, and we just gotta match those up with the red and black terminals on the top of the battery. Uh, now you don't need to, have a degree in uh, electrics or anything like that, electronics, to uh, hook this stuff up. It's simply a case of connecting one to the other. Uh, to make it easy, we can crimp on some spade end terminals uh, to the ends of the wires so that it just slips straight onto the connectors on the fish finder. And uh, yeah, you just take some of the exposed uh, wire at the end. You might want to double it up and twist it around a bit to bulk it up, but you can simply just slot those into the crimps uh, take some pliers or a crimping tool and just crimp those in position. Like so, so there's one on in place, nice and secure. And then we just take the second one, pop that on the other cable. nip that down with some pliers so again that's nice and secure on there then we can literally just hook it up to the uh, to the battery terminals I just have to wiggle them on if they're a little tight there's one in position and we hook up the other side and we should have them power to the fish finder providing the, the connections are all in the back and if we take off the protective sticker on the fish finder. And press the on button. If I swivel this round, you should be able to uh, see that we now have power to the fish finder here. So that's all working there. And the battery, that can sit in a little bag if you want inside the pod. I mean, the pod stays pretty dry. We can just be placed in by do a little battery holder kit for the pod. Uh, you can make your own little battery tub, waterproof battery tub, but that's now all inside. Fish finder installed on top. We've got power to the fish finder. It's just loading up for the first time there, initializing. Um, and yeah, transducers installed in the bottom. So this is now fully installed to the pod. Really clean setup, easy to take in and out of your kayak at the start and end of a session. Uh, throw it in the car, take it back in home, recharge everything, load up with your tackle, away you go again for next time. Really great bit of kit and it what makes the Viking kayaks very popular. Uh, they're brilliant kayaks, they paddle really well, but the tackle pod uh, is just an, another factor which makes them really great fishing kayaks. So yeah, there we go guys, that's how to fit the uh, Lawrence Hook Reveal 5 fish finder to the removable tackle pod from Viking Kayaks found on their ProFish Reload and ProFish GT Kayaks. As I mentioned, the same principle can be used for, for much of the fishing, or, or for the fish finders out there. Um, this one we use the low rinse scupper hole mount. Some of the others might not be compatible with that mount, but you can use the, the transducer mounts which come with 
the fish finder and screw mount them into the bottom of the pod with some sealant. So uh, that's another way to do it as well. But yeah, this way's worked fine. Uh, and now it's all ready to uh, go out there, use on a kayak and hope you find some fish. Okay guys, I hope you found that useful. Uh, any questions, ask away in the comments. And uh, for plenty more kite fishing videos, installation videos, reviews, overviews, anything to do with kite fishing, subscribe to my channel, Cornish Kayak Angler. Uh, and yeah, give us a like. Okay, thanks for watching. All the accessories shown in today's video can be brought from Cornwall Canoes. They're a specialist in kite fishing. So if you're in the UK, check out Cornwall Canoes. Uh, sell loads of fish finders, all the installation accessories you need for, for, for installing one of these on your fishing kayak, a uh, vast range of fishing kayaks as well. So check them out online, www.cornwall-canoes.co.uk.